1974 cold case disappearance of a young mom and her four-year-old daughter. This is an old school car, old school boxy, upside down, silted in. 11 miles away from their last known location, we discovered a 1961 red four-door Chevrolet Impala that has been underwater 40 plus years. I'm very concerned right now if it's gonna completely pull apart or not. Full moon, ladies and gentlemen. It's about 1 a.m. in the morning. It's uh, early Sunday. Uh, we've been out all day. Yeah, right there. See, we went, went. Any of these, you just push through. Yeah. See, You're not getting through there. You're not getting through there. No, it's too thick. One of the cases that we're covering is Doris Worst and Karen Worst missing in 1974 and a red 1961 Chevrolet Impala. So this is an old school car. We don't know what era, but it is old school boxy, upside down, silted in. Okay. Could be a dump, could be pre-guardrail, so it, it could be one of those. What kind of uh, dangers do you think you have to assess here, pre-dive? Dark uh, gator infested, possibly, area, although it's really residential around here, so no big deal. Old, old car, so we gotta be a little careful with it. It is buried, but we'll do what we can to try to find little details, badging, anything like that. So you're locked on with a magnet, Mike. We're locked on with a magnet. And it's about 17 feet yep. to the top of the, the target. Mag magnet grabbed right away again. Okay. Good to go. Hey, Ken, so there's something, if you're looking down the channel right now, yeah. there's something to the left of the mess. Water's cloudy, not really clear. So right now, Mike, we're diving on the car that we yeah. found two uh, days ago. Two days ago, yeah. Two days ago. We're right off a of sample road. Yeah. Uh, less than a mile from where Stephen McCrell was last seen. Yep, exactly. Oh, here it is, right below. Look at right here. It's literally right under the live scope over this side right now. You guys see that? Yeah. There's the wheel, there's the back wheel. You can't get a good image of it. It's hard to find. He's moving. Coming up. Ferdinand's completely deteriorated and buried. The hubcap has a, some kind of like a checker logo on it. The very back. Are you has, serious? The very back has a big chrome V emblem. Big chrome V emblem on the back. Is that an old Pontiac? Big V like that. Hold on, hold on. Put, put, put Sorry. This, like, can, like what? Can, Show can, me. Can you get it off big, with a knife? Big V like like this on the back. Chrome by the trunk. Lit. Well, if you were to guess what year the car that is, how what generation? Dude, it looks like the Coronet. It's that bad. It, wow. It's it's beat up and it's mostly buried. Well, I could tell you GM products. Give me that crowbar. I'll, I'll give you the hubcap. Oh, dude, that would be awesome. If you can get that hubcap, yeah. I will. That's identify the only way we're going to identify it. That's from where the license plate was. It's, okay. it's like it's, it's 15 feet. Hold on a second. There. I'm okay. going to go down. Yeah. Fuck with that thing a little bit. As soon as you feel that. There's no tension on on the on this, take ball. It. Take it. You got yeah. it. Okay. Chevy. You got a see-through center of the hubcap. Has a see-through center. Okay. And uh, that big V on the back. Yeah. Definitely Chevy. Big V on the back, like a Bel Air type of thing. He, he just identified yeah. the back of the vehicle as being an early '60s Impala. Is he? Yeah. Look at yeah. look at '61 Impala. Right there, there's, like, look, there's, there's one with the flag. Wow. Did we just find a missing couple? Yeah, maybe you did. No way. Look at this. Yeah. yeah. Look at this, Doug. Really? Yeah, look at, look at, right yeah. here. Yep. Look at. Yep. Yep. As the checkers. As you guys just heard, Ken went down, identified that it is indeed, in fact, in 61 Impala. He has identified the trim, the identifiers, the bumper. We, there is no license plate on it. It's heavily deteriorated. Uh, are they gonna do anything tonight? They're probably not gonna do anything tonight. That vehicle can't be pulled out. It's gonna take a an excavation job, uh, some dredging. Uh, it's gonna have to be a really methodical job. Did it feel like it was all initially soft when you put your arm in there? Or? Completely soft, yeah. Just to catch you guys up on where we're at right now with this mission, uh, we have BSO diver that's down doing as best as he can to make any type of identifications and the vehicle is just breaking up like a sponge. And that does nothing but complicate everything when it comes to the recovery and protecting this crime scene. Mike, what's up? what do you think about what's going on? Man, let's hope it's a vehicle. Well, yeah, we located this car yesterday. Let's see what happens, brother. Yeah. Um, what, do, what, 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 do, what do you think? 
the, how the Broward County Sheriff's Office is doing with the operations. I mean, they're doing awesome. This guy was in the water for about 40 minutes, so he's doing a thorough. He did a thorough assessment of that car. I was able to get probably shoulder width, shoulder length into the driver window. Uh, Emerald Towing, shout out to Emerald Towing, uh, AKA, you know, a Superior Towing, family of towing companies down here in Florida, the absolute best. We got a flatbed out here on standby. Twin line, two stage, heavy duty record here. And he's gonna have to get angled up to this buoy as we don't have a rotator. And the problem with that is this street being long enough, so we gotta get these cars moved. So we're working with the residents here to get those cars moved in order to get this truck parked this way. Straight on, straight shot. Steel cables are using weigh about seven pounds per foot. And we gotta drag it way the heck out there, 50, 100 feet, you know, out and down. And on the diagonal gets real heavy. And then the hooks themselves can be, well, you know, Doug, yeah. Pretty darn heavy, uh, what, 50, 100 pounds, depending on the hook? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, that will sink a diver real quick. So would you want to So I would say, the just front. because the windshield is what's broken, uh, like, if we can still keep it at somewhat of an angle and pulling it, you know, so, so we you still do both axles. Even. Both axles, whatever, the, get tension on both, keep it that way. Don't try to rotate the car. He's listening. Front, oh, shit, front and rear. So it would be so yeah, both axles sideways, sideways, sideways on the driver's side. So it would yeah, essentially like we're gonna get that that driver corner still leading it coming this way. So because all the other windows felt like they were attacked. Typically in all the recoveries that we've done in the past, we would use the boat to take the winch line out. But one thing Emeralds has done is they've actually rigged the zip line to send the heavy line out instead of using the, the boat. It allowed them to slide the zip line shackle in the heavy cable all the way down to the car because the rope is tied there and onto the car it's really cool really efficient and uh, not only that it's safer for the diver too because the diver isn't struggling to carry all of that weight and also the little boat isn't struggling to take it out there it can be pretty dangerous when we do that uncoiling the cable on those tiny little boats so uh, I like it when I see improvements tricks of the trade that make things easier for what we're gonna do in the future absorbing the knowledge and becoming more efficient. So we knew the vehicle was very brittle to begin with. Now we got it to the bank and it's starting to come out of the water, which is picking up more resistance and dead weight now that it's not buoyant. And it's starting to pull apart a little bit. It hasn't come unattached from the cables yet, but I'm very concerned right now if if it's gonna completely pull apart or not. There's no easy way to do this. Space for the flatbed to pick this up. It's got to clear the guardrail. You got to drive it forward? Nice. Yeah, hell yeah. Like, I was, I was able to stick my arm into the trunk, but I felt those taillights in the circle, they have a point, like yeah. a, a cone. Yep. Can I see that? This is a picture right out of the case file. And and Ken, when you were down there, you figured that's what you saw, right? Yeah, I had the upside down V that goes into the chrome trim. I had the same lights that are on that vehicle. We've got the, the year matching hubs. Screen. Um, the only thing we couldn't determine was the color. You know, so maybe we can get, uh, get down there, let it settle, do some penetration, and figure it out. Okay, gentlemen, what do you got going on? Oh, well, we've got in the sun here. It's, it's definitely blue. There's little little pieces of red. We don't know if it's an overpaint. We don't know if it's uh Typically, in my experience on these, the only thing that's left is the primer. Yeah. What do you What do you know about that? So okay. over here, we have a little 1961 Chevy Impala grill ornament. 
Yeah. It was typically red and white with a bow tie in the middle, which is what we have here. And if you count these lines, one, two, three, there's a star, and one, two, three, there's a star. You can see that uh, on a brand new one, but you can still find out if you Google that image. And then we have the backer of the license plate. We pulled the chrome piece last night, late last night, and this is the other piece that came off uh, the backer of the bumper. And we do have red paint on the back of here. Yeah, so they're gonna, they're gonna log that into evidence and hang on to it. Is the hubcap off hubcap of a 1961 only Impala? 1961 only Impala, and it is a four door. The cabin rolled off of the frame, yeah. So, uh, at this point, no remains. Yeah. Still a lot of work left to go, though. Yeah. It's light, man. Seven days a week, it never stops. It's a rat race. I want to thank everybody who made this possible today and got us to this point. First of all, Michael Sullivan with Sunshine Saint Sonar, Ken Fleming with Recon Dive Recovery, United Search Force for allowing me to be here, Broward County Sheriff's Office, their dive team, as well as the Miami FBI Field Office and Plantation Police Department where this case originated. We covered part of the vehicle. There's a lot of answers still left to be determined. It's gonna take quite some time for auto forensics to go over this vehicle. The dive team is still running grids to recover the rest of the vehicle and its contents, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment, and see you on the next one.